has her own podcast called Cyber Cafe. It's not just a podcast. It's like a it's like a sitcom. That's a radio show, but it's a podcast. Is that right? It's very impressive. There you go. Um, please welcome to the stage Abby Denton.
I just wrote that in case uh, the image was unreadably um, compressed, which it was not. All right. I folded this wrong. <laughs> According to the Gorian way of looking at things, the taste of a slave ring is thought to be occasionally beneficial to all women, even the exalted free woman. Thus, when she has been irritable or otherwise troublesome, even a free companion may find herself at the foot of etc., etc. It is the Gorian way of reminding her, should she need to be reminded, that she too is a woman, and thus to be dominated, to be the subject of men. Now, John Norman has been married since 1956. Uh, by all accounts, his wife is still alive. <laughs> It's difficult to know how she feels about her husband's philosophy that women are happiest when they're violently um, punished for expressing any emotion or thought, uh, because no one's ever managed to get an emotion or thought expressed by her. Um, now, I want to be clear here. I want to be clear here. Um, many people who are big fans of these books are fully aware that this is just just silly, silly jokes. Uh, I would wager that a, a relatively low proportion of them are actual serial killers. Yeah. Um, but the problem, and I hope you're on the same page as me here, it's difficult to be sure. <laughs> um, many people uh, defending the works of John Norman, which they enjoy, uh, point to, to loving things that he's written about women. For example, he condemns the notion of rape, uh, using these words, to pick on a woman because she is smaller and weaker is much the same as to pick on a child or animal. Or it is much the same as a young man striking an old man, or a large strong man beating a small weak man. It is just something that is not worthy to do. It's like beating an animal, by the You wouldn't do it to a dog. Why do it to your wife? Uh, this, to reiterate, uh, is used in an essay uh, defending the works of John Norman, defending the philosophy of John Norman. Um, uh, one paragraph in this essay also says, uh, I want you to look on the actual words of the man and ask yourself, are these the words of a man who hates women? Mm -hmm. yeah. I want you to ask yourself this. <laughs> uh, the most amazing thing about these essays to me, blogs, no one would publish this. Uh, because I'm the only scholar who cares. Um, but they all take the time saying, uh, no one's seriously suggesting that all women would be happier if they were violently forced to be sex slaves. Um, but while we're on the subject, that is true. Uh, it's it's a unique, a unique way of looking at things. Uh, here's another book from his non-gore work, a book which has a wonderful title and takes uh, one of my favorite uh, premises of any sci-fi book imaginable, which is that um, if all women worldwide were forced into a state of sexual submission. Um, we would invent uh, space travel faster. <laughs> and human culture would develop much faster, uh, and everything would be better. Uh, <laughs> possibly the only book concept I love more than Time Slave is Time Cat by the wonderful Lloyd Alexander. I'm led to understand this has been um, given a crappier cover in contemporary years, but this is the cover I grew up with. It's a better cover. Uh, this is mostly an excuse for me to show you book covers um, <laughs> that I like a lot. Uh, I like this cover a whole lot. Okay, two things about the Gore novels. Uh, they started in the 60s before pornography really existed. Despite that, um, they don't really use words like wiener. Uh, that would be gauche. Uh, no, they, they say, uh, oh, he delivered, he bequeathed unto her a red silk or something like that. It's all a very complicated system of, of euphemisms. Um, because I mean, you don't want to you don't want to be disrespectful to women <laughs> talking about their vaginas. Um, but this means that people discussing these books are either in denial that they're reading porn, or um, just think that this is how the world ought to ought to work. Uh, this is my favorite review of any of any book that I've ever read ever. In a, in a, a man, this is why I got onto this subject. I found a, an essay by a man on a. It's better than Twitter. Okay, this was. A website this man coded in plain HTML in like 2016. Yeah. All right, he's been updating it for decades. This is just white text on a black background. It's beautiful. I didn't have to click like on anything. I wasn't subjected to any ads. Uh, this is Wayne's site. <laughs> Wayne's stuff. Uh, I highly recommend it. Twitter, Facebook, Wayne's stuff. Those are my 
My, and the comics curmudgeon. Um, uh, this is one of my favorite book reviews of all time, where he's discussing his dis discomfort with the subject matter of these books. Uh, towards the end of the series, the situation became intolerable to even the most ardent fan. For example, book number 26 had 750 pages of men chaining, starving, kicking, beating, whipping, and raping innocent young girls kidnapped from Earth with the ridiculous result that they all fell helplessly in love, not only with their tormentor, but all men in general, and admitted that only being enslaved could they become truly happy and fulfilled women. Only a paltry 17 pages, three quarters of the way through the book had any plot or action. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear, indeed. <laughs> well, I did some math. <laughs> Would have been a lot punchier if I'd said that at the right time. I did some math. Uh, book number 26 was published in 2001 when John Norman would have been the age 69. Yes. Thank you. Uh, which means this was written in a pre-9-11 era for it to have gotten to the presses. Um, it's, a, it's a time capsule from a happier country, a better world, where <laughs> America was, was pure and plain and whole before we'd been hurt. Now, I just realized while reading that that I did the math slightly wrong here. Because he said it was 750 pages, so it would have been 767 total pages. Um, but that only makes it worse, okay? That only makes the fractions smaller, all right? A uh, novel average is about 275 words per page, and Witness of Gore, six words per page, we're not about sex slavery. Uh, an average book page has 275 words, six of which in this book would be story. <laughs> Uh, Edna St. Vincent Millay's poem, Euclid Alone Has Looked on Beauty Bear, is 102 words, seven of which are the title. Um, if John Norman had written that poem at age 69, nice, um, in the year 2001, and every word of the poem was the word boobies, <laughs> mathematically speaking, John Norman would still not be able to maintain his focus long enough to write the title of the poem. <laughs> At least one of those words would be boobies. 9-11. <laughs> Apparently he's gotten better. Apparently he's gotten better. Um, this is one of the most alarming appendixes, appendices I've ever seen on an HTML page. You know, you know, I'll tell you, if he adopted CSS, uh, this would be a lot faster, because he could just summon classes, which is kind of like a thing you do in a fantasy novel now that I think about it. Um, update with three uh, exclamation marks, not an auspicious start. Uh, I'm happy to report that volume 34, Rebels of Gore, is a good addition to the series. It still suffers from 40 pages of master-slash-slave-girl dialogue, but that's a small amount when compared to the 645 pages of mostly action that make up most of the book. There were a few good laughs toward the end of the story. <laughs> what sort of japes do you think could be happening? <laughs> 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 uh, my harem of violent, naked sex slaves uh, were gored by a dragon the other day. <laughs> a few good laughs. This is better than most of the recent issues. He's still reading them, okay? <laughs> to be clear, this is an essay about this guy saying that this is garbage that no one should touch. <laughs> He's read 34 pages of 700 page books of nothing but a book who's famous. The main criticism people level at it first is that it's extremely repetitive. People repeating, it's good to enslave women. <laughs> And you know what? I think that's where, where I start to tune up. Uh, at the bottom, for a detailed list of the plots for the book, I recommend anglefire.com. Yeah. <laughs> You're laughing. I don't think you appreciate how alarming this is, okay? <laughs> book 34, Rebels of Gore, was published in 2016 when this man was writing this blog. <laughs> And he linked to an angel fire. <laughs> what time vortex did, did, did Wayne's sight come out of? Second, even more alarming, even more wonderful. Okay, and the reason that I love Wayne more than my friends, more than my family, more than the audience. No, I could never love anyone. <laughs> Beloved, the most alarming thing. Uh, this was not a hyperlink, first of all. I had to copy it out. It, he made sure to highlight it just to trick you. Okay, and another thing I love about Wayne is his leprechaunish sense of humor. Uh, 
<laughs> he loves green, okay? <laughs> and exclamation marks, like I imagine most leprechauns. Um, kind of paste. There is no angle fire website. No. That doesn't exist, which means Wayne typed this URL from memory. <laughs> was exactly what he described, apart from the L and the E, which he typed out manually, and uh, I'm going to leave you tonight with one of my favorite things about fantasy novels, which is when they'll just have completely normal things, like, oh, I was riding on my lizard horse to get some nutrition food. That headline was plagiarized from an Upright Citizens Brigade sketch, because uh, I didn't prepare this. Um, here's a... Uh, one of my favorite things from, from this Angel Fire page. It's, a, it's from a, a long glossary of all of the, the, the instruments of torture, to quote the Goonies. Um, he's in this book. Uh, and at the bottom, collar. It's what they call a collar. <laughs> he doesn't want it to be too normal. 